This is Ethan. I'm here to teach you your very first game in Scratch. We're going to make a quick platformer game. It's going to be really simple. So um, what we're going to cover in this video, we're going to have a brief overview of Scratch. Um, you're going to make your platformer and then if you have any questions, just comment and uh, I'll get back to you on that. So, okay, let's get started. Alright, so first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're uh, signed into Scratch. So, you know, it saves your work. And um, so first you want to go to create, and it brings you with this right here. All right, so what we're going to be covering today is uh, how to make sprites move. You can see this little cat is here. We're going to learn to make a move. We're going to learn about loops and decisions, which is a core programming concept, and also uh, variables, which is really important, and maybe even some animation. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing you want to do is choose a sprite. As you can see, we have this cat right here, but you may not want that. You may want to use your own. So um, let's delete him for now. Um, you can either draw your own thing, which takes time. It's like paint. You can draw something, but I'm not that good of an artist. So I'm just going to choose a sprite from the library. So you can choose any of these sprites. I'm going to go with the fish. All right. So here's your sprite. You can resize it with this button over here, make them smaller. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this player move. So first, let's learn about scripting in Scratch. So scripting is based on these things over here called blocks. And each block is in a tab and it's color coded based on what it does. So we have motion blocks, they're all in blue, they all move, the character, return it. You have looks, which is like animation and sprite changing and stuff like that, graphical effects. And you have all these other tabs you can explore. They're all color coded and they all do something in particular. So scripting is really easy in Scratch. What you can do is you can just click and drag onto this space right here. So blocks of the same script will snap like this, sort of like Legos. So it's really easy to keep track of, you know, your script. You can get rid of a block if you don't like it. You can duplicate it like this and snap them together. And that will just perform these actions sequentially. So like let's do something like this. So first it's going to move 10 steps, then turn 15 degrees, and then move another 10 steps. So let's run it. And you can see what's going on here. It's moving. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. All right. So first thing we need to learn about blocks is something called parameters. You see this number 10 right here? This modifies what this action does. It's called a parameter. And you can change it to whatever suits you. Like you can make it move 100 spaces. You can also modify parameters or values with things called operators, which is under the green tab. You could have this operation, which just adds two values together. Like 10 plus 10, which makes 20, so it'll move 20 steps. All right. Well, another core concept we need to learn is variables. So variables are pieces of memory that are stored by the game or program. In Scratch, variables are either stored as text, numerical values, or booleans. We don't know what booleans are yet, we'll cover that later. So also, a variable can be used to fill a parameter. So how do we create a variable? So first we want to go to data right here, under the big orange tab. Uh, we want to go to make a variable. And um, we'll call our first variable speed. So we want to make it for this sprite only, right here. We'll call it speed. Okay. So first thing we want to do with the variable, you can delete this. Uh, the first thing we want to do with it is we want to initialize it, which means giving it a starting value. So we want to do when the flag is clicked, which means when you start the game. So that's all it means. You know, so when the flag is clicked, we want to set the speed variable. See, this is speed. We want to set it to 10. So that is giving it an initial speed of 10. So another thing, um, another core programming concept are loops. And they're really important because loops allow 
groups of commands to repeat as many times as you want without having to copy it over and over again. So let's go to control. So there are certain kinds of loops. There are forever loops, which just runs the command infinitely forever until you know you stop the program. And then there are loops which repeat a certain number of times. Um, this this variable here is a, a parameter, as you can see, so you can just repeat it however many times you want. So most games require a forever loop to continuously update the game, which is what we're going to use a lot. So another thing we need to learn is conditionals. What are conditionals? So it's basically, if something is true, then it would perform whatever command you tell it to. So conditionals take variables which are called booleans, which basically are a value that only has two states, either on or off. Also, you could have conditional loops. Yeah. So, this basically runs the loop until this boolean is true. Uh, Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for this time. Stay tuned for next week. Uh, next week we're going to learn about player-controlled movement, gravity, and uh, collision detection. So, it's going to be really cool. Stay tuned.